Hello everyone, and welcome to my dining room. I know what you might be thinking, Ariel, that's a living room. <laughs> it is right now, but that's only because sometimes things have to go in a circuitous path to get where you want to go. When we moved into this house, I pretty quickly knew what rooms I wanted uh, to create. And this was always going to be the dining room. However, because the room that's going to be the living room was so full of moving stuff, boxes, items, dogs even. <laughs> we had a dining table here for a while while um, I was getting these couches. It was like, listen, I can get this room to like 80% of where I want it. That is better than not tackling it at all and just waiting for the perfect moment. So it became a living room. But now that things have continued to move along in the house and I actually can transition this and push it to its final stage of being a dining room, which I'm so excited about. I have to empty this room again, <laughs> which I remember doing like a year ago, to empty this room out and do the floors. Oh, Furniture is out of here. The floor has been cleaned and it is now time to put down the cork underlayment and then the wood floor. Hello, Max. <laughs> okay, my office is a disaster. It is where all the furniture has come to wait while we sort everything out. Hello, hello. But the floor is looking incredible. Incredible. So kind of last minute, well, it's sort of not last minute and also is last minute. Sort of last minute, I decided to pitch the idea of doing a pattern on the floor. Instead of just doing lines of planks, what if we did something cool? And my dad was super into the idea. And so we made this fantastically cool design on the floor and I cannot wait to see it when it's sanded and stained and has its finishing layers on it because I think it's I really think it's going to be stunning. The first thing I need to do is sand the floor. Sanding is boring and it's hard work but it's so important because yeah it makes the floor soft obviously. It makes them smooth and feel expensive and feel luxurious. Um, Oftentimes, you can have bad quality wood or a really simple project, but if it's finished well because it was really well sanded, it will feel super luxe anyways. So sanding the floor, that's step number one. It's going to take a while. I go in with an 100 grit sandpaper, and then I go in with an 150 grit sandpaper. The step after that is staining the floor. This is a very fun step because you see like a really really big transformation. The floor goes from being the obviously the, the white color to being this rich wood color. I always go in with a pre-stain wood conditioner first because especially with pine I've noticed it makes a really big difference to give 
any project you're doing a much more even staining job. It just looks way better. So again, it takes extra effort, but all of that effort really pays off. After the stain has dried and it's had time to settle, I go in with a poly. I don't like polyurethaning large surfaces like floors. It's so difficult to get it even. It's totally possible. It's just tricky. I do a layer of the poly, let it dry for a day or like a night, and then the next day I have to sand it. Imagine... <laughs> But honestly, it's the most satisfying thing. That that type of sanding I do like because that's just hand sanding and you're just um, basically buffing it all down. It's removing all the imperfections. The poly gets air bubbles. It catches little pieces of dust, all sorts of little imperfections. So you buff it out with sandpaper and I go in with a 400 grit and then you poly it again and then you sandpaper it again and then you poly it for a final time so it's so much work when it's at this scale but I mean you would have just seen it because we did a montage before we move on to the next step I'd like to do a word from our sponsor which today is Wayfair so you know Wayfair they sell furniture any furniture you can think of they've probably got it but they also have a YouTube channel where they've been creating a bunch of content including a show by yours truly. I've been making a show over there called A Style is Born, where we do a deep dive into the history of interior design. And today, the episode on Japandi has gone live. I think this is my favorite miniature set <laughs> that I've made. If you like my videos, I think you'll probably like it because I made it, I wrote it, I edited it, I, I made it. So if you want to check that out, it is linked down below. And thank you to Wayfair for sponsoring this video. So there we have it. What's next? For me, it's going to do all of that work. For you, I think it's probably the wainscoting. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to my dining room. <laughs> So when I first moved in, it looked like this. It was bad, it was really bad. It had this disgusting brown carpet. It had brown paneling on two of the four walls for some reason. 
Um, and so it just felt really dingy and gross. I painted it to look like the room from Emma. That was my inspiration because I love that movie. I love that set design. I love that era of kind of decor. And I was like, cool, like those are gonna be my color inspirations. It now is what I wanted it to be from the very beginning. And it feels so special in here to sort of see that transformation. The trim molding on the walls. First of all, I called it wainscoting in my last video and some people got very mad at me. <laughs> it looks gorgeous. It was so much work. It was so much work. It took so much longer than I thought it would, but so unbelievably worth it. Like it makes this house that already has so much character and charm feel like it has so much more character and charm. It really elevates the room as well because the lines go up so high, it makes the room feel really tall and elegant. And what it's done that I'm like extra excited about is it's made the room look even more like the room from Emma that I was originally wanting to replicate. So I feel like I've actually gotten closer to my goal. <laughs> I wanna talk about the table and the chairs for a second. So yet again, I got these chairs within weeks of moving into this house. We needed somewhere to sit. And so I found them on Facebook Marketplace. They were super cheap. I remember I got the six chairs for like, it was like $50 or $80 or something. I don't know if they really make sense, perfect sense for this room. I didn't know I'd be going for kind of a, an elegant, regal Jane Austen vibe, but I also don't have the budget to just go out and buy chairs on a whim. <laughs> and I do like the chairs. So I'm just sort of letting myself take my time with them. Secondly, this table is such a success story. So this tabletop is so beautiful. It's got some dents on it. It's got a couple of little wears and tears, but overall it's in really nice solid shape. It feels really solid and lovely and like high quality. My mom found it for free on the side of the road on one of her dog walks almost a year ago now. And it came with these legs and I instantly knew I didn't like the legs. Part of thrifting is transforming. I love thrifting and I would not be able to afford to furnish my house if I wasn't thrifting. Um, so I do it both out of love and necessity. A big part of thrifting is the willingness to transform stuff and be like, okay, wait, this element of this is really cool, but it would be even cooler if I did X, Y, Z. And so I found these legs on Ikea or at Ikea, and I think they're cool. I know that there's gonna be some people who don't like the way that the the wood is a different color, but I think the two-tone wood looks actually pretty interesting. I would be open to changing the legs on this table again if I saw something um, that really inspired me, because I know that I love the tabletop. So it's sort of cool to experiment with how the legs transform the table, <laughs> if that makes sense. So there's two last things to mention, a carpet. <laughs> there is like this big debate in interior design if dining rooms should have carpets or not, partly because they look great and they feel great and like rugs can really complete a room. But on the other hand, it's a dining room, food could fall, things could spill. So it's sort of like, is this a design over function thing or should like, you know what I mean? I think, that a carpet will look really, really good in this room because of the Emma vibes. I bought one on Facebook Marketplace that I think would fit this room beautifully. But I worked so hard on these floors <laughs> and I am so proud of these floors that I do not currently want to cover them all up with a giant carpet. I just wanted to bring that up because I knew some people would yell at me for not having a carpet on the ground. <laughs> Another little detail that is irrelevant, but somebody is gonna ask me because people always ask me, what the hell is going on with this little window? <laughs> I don't know what this window is. 
I don't know. This house is 160 years old. It has so much history. So many different people have lived here. Who knows? <laughs> what the hell? This little window is for. Also, this vase was in the middle of the table. I love this vase. I think it looks really good. But when we put water in it, it started leaking. So I, <laughs> unfortunately, this vase has betrayed me. So we're putting it here as a decorative item instead. So they would have been cooking on fire. So I'm wondering if, you know, if this kitchen over here is making a lot of heat, maybe they wanted to open up this wall in order to get some of that heat to kind of spread throughout the house better. Guys, there's a lot of questions, but I knew people would ask, and the answer I guess is, I don't know. I don't know why this little window is here, but I will tell you, I had the best idea ever. The best idea ever. I am now officially on the lookout for a stained glass window to hang here. This is a thing that I've seen a lot of people do in the Maritimes where they like hang stained glass art on the inside of the house on a window and so it lets the light through and i think it would look so beautiful to have a stained glass uh, window here hanging and just like looking beautiful just completely decorative so i'm officially on the lookout for that and I'll be very excited when I find it and I can install it and make it look really pretty because I think that would look so gorgeous. So that brings us to the end of this video and the very big and exciting conclusion of this room. It means so much to me to have this room fully realized. I am so excited to have a dining room table where I can hang out and I can, like me and my mom had coffee there the other day and I was like, this is nice. <laughs> I just bought a beautiful chess board and I'm like, I have somewhere I can sit now and play. I got somewhere I can do puzzles or play board games. And I have somewhere now where when people come over, we can hang out. I learned so much while doing this room. Like I've never installed trim molding before. Why would I have? I've never done that, but now I feel like I really know how to do that. You know, this wall was the first one I did, which hopefully you saw that video where I like, we made this gallery wall. By the time I got to the end of the room, <laughs> I was so good at installing trim molding. I was better at cutting and sawing the wood. I was better at using the nail gun efficiently. I was better at caulking. I learned a lot about like, Oh my God, I hate caulking. <laughs> I'm actually, I just need a break from it. The beauty is starting to spread throughout the house, which is very satisfying. Also, I have started a little bit of Halloween decorations. And also, also, I forgot to mention that I also learned how to install a ceiling light. I'd never done that before. And it really scared my mom, but I did it. And it was very successful. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has joined me for this video and for the rest of my journey updating this house. I've been having a lot of fun making these videos for you guys. And I'm really grateful to all of my patrons who have been supporting me because very genuinely, I would not be able to like afford the trim molding and stuff like that if it wasn't for all of you guys watching and all of you guys supporting me. So thank you again. And I hope you enjoyed this renovation. <gasps> It's everybody's favorite. Okay, so from me and Max, uh oh, it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next room. Bye. <laughs>